Hello, welcome back to the Spiritual Warrior Experience channel. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It has been a little bit since the last video. However, since we're going to be discussing meditation and the holidays were in full swing, I took that time to deepen my meditation practice to better address the questions that have been coming up in the Discord and just sort of generally in my day-to-day -day life, a lot of synchronicities or more people are wondering about meditation. In fact, very recently there was a wonderful series on how to properly or authentically meditate on the Glorian YouTube channel. I will leave a link in the description below to the playlist for that. It is highly recommended. It's a, a longer series, so uh, take your time going through it and perhaps listen to certain episodes a couple of times. But for this video, I will be giving a broad overview and adding my own experience, direct experience with meditation and where I'm at with it currently. So when we meditate, what we are looking for is to acquire information. Although that sentence in of itself can be a bit confusing for some people since meditation is a kind of observing and receiving in a way. We're self-observing, however, we're also self-observing to clear the three minds that we have, right? The intellectual, the emotional, and the physical mind to clear those of noise or egos in the Gnostic teachings or psychic aggregates, unwanted thoughts, unwanted emotions, um, physical impulses. And we do that through self-observing and then through praying to our Divine Mother who is, we each have our own particular Divine Mother um, to eliminate that ego. And that has been covered, that has been covered on this channel in a previous video. I'll link that in the description below. So that, that is why we meditate primarily. Of course, we also meditate to improve our ability to self-observe, not just in meditation, but day to day. When we meditate daily, we are more able to notice thoughts and emotions and impulses arising when we are outside of the meditation practice. The two are really meant to be connected and strengthen each other. Our meditation practice extends out into our entire day. And then of course, it also extends into the time when our physical body is asleep and our consciousness is outside in the astral. Because the more that we meditate and the more we become self-observant from moment to moment outside of meditation while the physical body is awake, the more we're likely to realize that we're in the astral, perhaps in a dream, or perhaps just wandering the astral unconsciously. So really, it's, it's all connected. However, going back to that series on Glorian, there's a really wonderful visual that they use, and it really boils down to sort of these eight steps that they outline. And it goes, restraint, observances, relaxed posture, energy control, withdrawal, concentration, meditation, reality. Now these are, this is all just a play on form in a, in a certain sense. Every teaching has its way of describing this process and it's going to be a bit different for all of us depending on where we're at with the practice when we first come to it and as we've been doing it. But this is very helpful because the question is that I'm seeing pop up a lot is, you know, when we meditate, how does the information that we're looking for, how does it get to us? Is it a visual? Is it like a thought? Is it both? And the simple answer is that it can be both. It can be a visual. It can be sometimes like a fully formed thought. 
not like in the way that we intellectualize normally, right? Where you do this comparative thinking and you're like pulling on a thread, but just you can be in this, I've had this experience where I'll be in deep meditation and then I'll have a full sentence will appear to me for one of these videos that I'm making or for some other problem in life. Or sometimes it's just a couple of words appear to me and I get this instant intuitive understanding. Other times I've had images, I've had images flash into my vision for different lengths of time, but those are very occasional and only very recent occurrences. Really, when we begin with meditation, it's these first three or four steps that we really have a lot uh, to focus. We have to focus on them a lot. Restraint and observances has a lot to do with the egos. And this is where the videos on this channel can be very helpful. Um, ego death and line of presence and balancing moods are all very useful for restraint and observances and essentially what we're looking to achieve with these two steps is to to simplify this restraint is things like gluttony right if we overeat then when we sit down to meditate it will be difficult to meditate or perhaps you spent four or more hours playing video games or binge watching something well you'll find that if you sit down to meditate after doing that the intellectual mind and the emotional mind will either be exhausted or there's all this energy buzzing around, all this noise, and that can carry throughout the following days and even weeks sometimes. Admittedly, the exhaustion will go away with sleep and rest, but the noise will will sort of remain. And that's because, remember, we have multidimensional bodies, right? Our body, we have a physical body, a vital body, an astral body, or emotional body, a body of desires, uh, a mental body, and then the causal body, which is sort of like our our body of will. And then, of course, there's conscious, the body of consciousness beyond that. And that gets into deeper and deeper esoteric things. Really, the ones that we want to be most focused on are the four, or you could even say five bodies, which is the physical, vital, astral, mental, and causal is probably the, the most you'd want to consider at, at the early on. And, and the reason this is important is because these bodies all sort of, you can think of it like everyone likes to talk about how we have an energy field, but the reality is, is that we almost have a multidimensional, multi-layered energy field. And this is why it's so helpful to think about the egos or the psychic aggregates, um, these psychological defects that we have, right? Pride, gluttony, envy, anger, lust. It's, it's helpful to think of them like an onion because as we peel away layers of an onion, there's more layers beneath, right? And the same is true of egos. So when we unconsciously engage in binge watching or video games or any anything, any activity, when, when, we, when we binge any activity really or do any activity unconsciously, we're sort of, burying egos at different layers, like shoving egos at different layers down into that energy field, down in th into our subconscious. And so when we sit down to meditate, if we haven't had restraints, then we have a much more difficult time achieving relaxed posture. And then of course, energy control. And then of course, even withdrawal and concentration, like those are deeper, deeper steps. So this really is important this early part of you know restraint uh, observances um observances are well you know it's related to self observation that's part of it for instance we all have challenging family members that that will trigger our you know our egos our, our psychic aggregates right our our psychological defects they'll trigger our anger they'll trigger our pride sometimes it's the two combined pride gets triggered and then ego comes right or we encounter people in our life who challenge our gluttony or they challenge, they, they bring out our gluttony or they bring out our lust or they bring out our greed. And it's almost like our inner divinity, our innermost challenging us, giving us a, a test, right? A temptation. Here, be prideful. Here, get angry. Here, be lustful. Let's see what happens. And if we're self-observing, we, depending on where we're at with our meditation practice, dissolving egos, we will 
notice this and perhaps we will notice ourselves giving in, right? We'll notice ourselves being angry, just getting angry or, or immediately having lustful thoughts or immediately gorging on junk food or whatever, you know, too much of our favorite food, whatever it might be, but we'll observe it and we'll see it happening. And that's, that's some progress, right? Or perhaps we've been at that stage for a little while and for the first time we catch it, we notice the thought and it doesn't, we don't create it into words, right? Real sacred geometry is the creation of beautiful patterns with the word, beautiful patterns, patterns in life with the word. Observances have many aspects to them. Some people renounce things. Um, some people prostrate, pray in a certain way. They do certain mantras. And this is talked about in the videos as well. And those are all part of it, but it's something that will come and should come intuitively through study of these topics, these spiritual topics, these especially these esoteric ones, and then the, and doing the practice. So, and it doesn't it doesn't all come at once. It's not like one, you know. It's not like you're going to achieve all restraints first, and then okay, okay, I've achieved all restraints. Then I'm going to achieve all observances. Okay. Now I'm going to work only on relaxed posture. Okay, I've perfected that. Now I'm going to work on the next, you know, it doesn't work that way. So it's going to work as you have some restraint. You start putting, placing restraints in where you're able to. You have some observances. You start self-observing. You start finding ways to pay penance that intuitively, that, that intuitively connect with you. We all have that, right? I need to stop doing this. I need to stop. For some people, it's smoking. They realize I really need to stop smoking, whether it's nicotine or maybe it's marijuana or maybe it's or maybe it's drinking maybe someone has a drinking problem or it's compulsive shopping or it's something right it could be as simple as just cleaning up a bedroom cleaning up a house cleaning up a car right maybe someone who has a really messy environment and you you know that you need to do this thing it could be that simple so we start where we can and then You'll find that if you start to have more restraint, have more observances, when you sit down to meditate and you sit down to achieve a relaxed posture, you'll find that it's much, much more easy to become relaxed, not just physically relaxed, but emotionally and intellectually relaxed, right? Perhaps you know that you need to get some certain things for school or work done and you really don't want to, but you have this intuition that says, I need to do this. I just need to get this done and you do it properly. And then, uh, and then, you know, a few, you feel better, right? We've all had that experience and, and meditation is no different. If anything, meditation is even more demanding of it to achieve true meditation. Because if you notice on these steps, meditation is step seven, right? We're only talking about the first two or three steps at this phase in the video. And we're about 15 minutes into this video. So... You, you might, if you're having trouble meditating, you know, if you've read about these experiences people have where they see these incredible things or they have these incredible insights and you're, and you're, there's this wanting for that, right? There's this, oh, I want to have that, I, you know, self-observe. Notice that that is an ego. That is a psychic aggregate. That is a psychological defect. I've experienced those. We, we all have experienced those at some point or another, and it's the, and that's a good, that's a very good one to work to comprehend, you know, through intuitively comprehend it and, and pray to the divine mother to dissolve that defect and, and to meditate on it. It's that process. And in fact, there's, it's almost like just as there's a, there's a, as above, so below, right? There's a microcosm of a macrocosm. Think of these steps. There's, there's a, there's a, each of these steps are something that you work on in the big picture right? As above. And then in the micro small picture as, as, as below the macrocosm and the microcosm, there's a macrocosm and a microcosm to meditation progress. You can think of it as like this, the infinity sign, if you will, is another um, way perhaps to visualize what I'm getting at here. So when you sit down to meditate, depending on restraint, depending on observances, your relaxation step will take anywhere from minutes, you know, a few minutes to maybe 20, 20 to 30 minutes, depending, right? Especially if it's, there's a lot of noise in the system, right? And, and you're new to the process. It, it could vary. And you might not even get to the point where you're 
achieving withdrawal for a while. But even if you only get to the relaxed posture phase, see what most people do in modern meditation today, what most people are doing with guided meditation is they're getting to relaxation. They're, they're relaxing and then they feel incredibly better and they talk about the health benefits, right? And it's true. That is very true. But if they were to go deeper with this practice, the, this is, you know, we need consistency and we need to at some point, stop using guided meditations. Guided meditations are training wheels, right? If you want to ride a bike, yeah, you can start with training wheels. You can start with someone holding the bike for you. And that's great. That's, you know, very important to start with for most everybody. However, the goal is to take those training wheels off and apply the technique on one on one's own, you know, um, being. Because of course, our being is helping us with meditation. But um, in this metaphor, the person holding the bike might be, you know, our, um, the person who's giving the guided meditation, right? And the training wheels might be something like starting with some back support, starting with some comfortable seating positions. But then, you know, when we first start out, especially if you have back, um, back injuries or things like that, uh, that's, you know, a separate topic, but that, uh, I'll get into that in a minute here, but that's sort of the way to think about this is, you know, when we start restraining observances and we start relaxed posture, we need help. We need to take it easy on ourselves we, but we, because the most important thing is daily consistency. And that's the most difficult thing for many people. A lot of people want to learn how to meditate so they can sit and do it when they feel like they need it. But that's like saying, I want to drink water only when I'm almost dying of dehydration, <laughs> right? That's, no, we should be drinking water throughout the day, you know, regularly. In fact, I just reminded myself. So just like we need water throughout the whole day to really notice the benefits of being well hydrated, we need meditation every day to really notice the benefits of being more self-observant, more psychologically hydrated. And so when you sit down to meditate, you won't get visions, you won't get thoughts immediately. The thoughts that you're going to have are probably going to be egos. In fact, this is represented in the ancient Egyptian uh, teachings as the red demons of Seth. And I've experienced this, particularly uh, in the last almost a month now, um, I started a new posture for relaxed, uh, a new sitting meditation posture for a relaxed position. Uh, typically, I've always meditated with lower back support or um, lying flat on my back. Now, lying flat on your back, either in the corpse pose with your arms and legs straight, um, not rigid, just straight, you, you want to relax. That's a real form of meditation. And that's a really great way to meditate at the end of the day in bed um, before sleep. It can help with astral projection. It can help with more lucid dreams. Um, I also, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep, great, meditate, lay on your back and meditate. It's the perfect, it's the perfect opportunity. I've actually spoken to a few people who say, oh, I don't have time to meditate. I, I only have 10 minutes a day. What, what do I do? And I ask them, well, do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and have insomnia? And they go, oh yeah, a lot. And I say, then you, that's a great time to meditate. The, the wake back to bed method is essentially that, you know, where you, you wake up in the middle of the night and you, you meditate. And then you go back to bed with the intention of having a lucid dream or an astral projection. So perfect, right? Uh, if you're a busy parent or student and you don't have time during the day to meditate, but in the middle of the night you wake up and it's fairly quiet. I mean, maybe your partner might snore a little bit, but just consider that a, a, a penance, right? It's a challenge. Um, can you, maybe it brings up some egos and then you have an opportunity to dissolve some egos. So the red demons of Seth or something I very recently experienced uh, practicing a new sitting meditation. I was uh, practicing, I tried out a bunch of different positions, the half lotus seated position. Uh, I typically like to meditate in a chair when I would, when I would um, sit and meditate kind of the Western style, but I would use, you know, a decent amount of back support, not like leaning full back into the chair. Although sometimes I would do that, but of course, like most people experience, it's very easy to fall asleep when you do it that way. So when you're looking to meditate during the day, it's good to have just lower back support with a rolled up blanket, something like that. You can start that way. That's perfectly good as well. But strive to work towards a 
seated position with no back support, assuming you don't have a back injury. If you and if you experience some upper back pain when practicing this, that most likely has to do with those muscles not being strengthened yet, or your posture could be um, incorrect. One of the videos in the series focuses on relaxed posture, and there is a guided relaxation technique in that video that can you'll find very helpful. Another thing that helped me with this process, I, I eventually adopted the what's known as the Burmese meditation pose. It's it's basically the easiest one to do on a cushion seated on the floor. I, I wanted to have something that I could do on a floor on a cushion and see how that went for me. Um, because you know it should be comfortable ultimately for us. And it was very challenging at first to sit that way. Uh, I the that visual of the red demons of Seth is very accurate because what will happen is when you sit down to meditate with no back support, you'll experience these red, you know, this, the, the red demons of Seth is another way to conceptualize the egos, to conceptualize the psychic aggregates. And these red demons of Seth could be ag agitating our intellectual body and mind or our emotional body and mind or, and or our physical body and mind. And in my case, it was all three, Right. Uh, when I started, I had all these pains and aches. And then, of course, that led to thoughts of like, oh, I'll never be able to do this. Uh, those thoughts arising and like uh, then emotions of frustration showing up. And, you know, I, that maybe happened for a good 15 or so seconds, maybe more before I realized, oh, I see what's happening. I, I see exactly what this is. These are egos. And initially, I being very... uh stubborn. I simply worked with it at, for a while because I was very focused on developing posture and developing the muscles. And it took me a while before I realized I need to dissolve these egos. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm like, uh, it's, it's funny how even the, you know, I practice these ego dissolution techniques uh, and yet the psychological gym of life threw me a curveball, And that's why it's good to have these opportunities. I, my intuition was saying, need to do this, need to do this. Egos didn't want to do it. And I didn't fully understand what, why it was I needed to do this new posture. But the reality of it was just like getting a new job or moving to a new city or just new circumstances in life, it, it makes new egos emerge. And all these new egos of mine emerged. And then I, I started to develop a new technique. And so I'll share that technique that I have. It works very well. I only recently discovered this and I've been using it with good success. And what it is, it's very simple. Sit down and meditate. Okay. Do the relaxation phase first. Now, of course, restraint and observances, those are something we do throughout day-to-day -day life. So start when you sit down to meditate, the first step is relax. Relax the physical body. You know, take a, ooh, a deep breath. Maybe a few of those relax the emotional mind, and then of course the intellectual mind. Now here's where the the thing that I learned came into play, which is that we must pray to our divine mother when the intellectual mind is. It's sort of like a table, right? If you think about the chakras, the chakras are uh, so chakra. I believe is Sanskrit for wheel, right? Or you can think of it like a table. And imagine that all these egos are like personalities that are, that are coming to the table, right? You're having these thoughts like, one of the thoughts I had was, oh, my right leg is, is falling asleep. What if the blood flow stops and that's damaging to my leg? <laughs> and I had this thought, and it's funny in hindsight. And, and then, of course, there was a, an emotional ego that came to the emotional table and was worried about this. And then there was a physical impulse that came to the physical body's table and wanted me to move my leg. And and what we need to do in this situation when this sort of thing happens is we ask the Divine Mother to eliminate this ego. Simple as that. It's Well, it, I say simple as that, but it wasn't immediately obvious to me. So there's, there's something, there is something to this insight, but it takes practice because there's going to be a lot of egos coming to the table. When you sit down to do a, a sitting meditation with no back support, it is very challenging. Those red demons of Seth will really, they'll come out in full force and they'll want to possess the the three bodies and and say no no away with this so really you have to keep repeating you know dissolve this ego my divine mother or eliminate this ego my divine mother please you know please and just and really stay with that prayer or 
Um, if you're, you don't have to call it prayer. You can, you can call it intent. Um, the divine mother is a part of, we each have our own divine mother and she will, you know, divine mother Kundalini is the energy that rises up through the chakras. So I, I do that for 10 or 20 minutes, however long intuitively seems best. I relax and then I self-observe. And then what I do is, and what, what has worked is I get to a certain point where that all finally calms down, right? No more. Okay. Very few, if any egos are coming up, very few thoughts. And if they are, if they are coming up, it's, you can clearly see them for what they are. And you can keep working with the divine mother. If you want to make the whole session about that, the whole meditation session about that, you can, but if you want to get to step four in that original list of energy control, what I recommend doing is to, that's pranayama, right? So pranayama meaning, um, basically you're controlling life force spirit energy with the breath. So to get to that point, you can do a hamsa pranayama. You can simply very closely observe your breathing and hold when you breathe in through the nose, hold the breath for as long as you can or up to 30 seconds, but make sure that you don't hold it so long that, that your muscles get tense and then release it, you know, quickly through the mouth. Um, or you can do box breathing, right? You know, f say four or five seconds, pick however many seconds is comfortable to you. You don't have to count them exactly, but kind of roughly, you know, four seconds, breathe in, four seconds, hold, four seconds, breathe out, four seconds, hold, four seconds, breathe in that, you know, or it can be five or six, however long fits for you. Just kind of do it in a consistent way. That's the simplest way to do pranayama. Another way is to do the mantras. A lot of singing comes down to breath control. You can chant it like, oh, you can chant a mantra or you can sing a mantra. You can go, oh, the main thing is that you feel the, the resonant vibration in each of your chakra centers. By resonant vibration, what I mean is like, if, you, if you've ever seen two tuning forks, right? That are the exact same tuning forks. And you can go watch videos on YouTube where people do this. And if someone hits one tuning fork, right? Bing, and it vibrates, and then they bring that vibrating tuning fork close to the other one. The other tuning fork will vibrate, will have a resonance with the one that was struck. So that's what you're really trying to achieve with the chakra mantras, is you're trying to get that vib vibratory resonance. And if you can't feel it, it could be that you're not mantralizing, chanting quite loud enough, or your meditation isn't quite deep enough yet. So stick with it and just keep practicing. And you also, you know, play with your octave. It's going to be at a different octave level for every one of them. Now, if you want to know all of the mantras, I will link to the Kundalini chakra series from Astral Doorway in the description below. Um, so you, that's, you know, you do the relaxation while observing, self-observing, praying to the divine mother. Maybe do some pranayama after that for five or 10 minutes. Ideally, you do actually do the pranayama then go into the mantras for however long. And then when you feel that you've you know, spent enough time with mantras, all the way up to, you could do five, 10 minutes of mantras. You could do a whole hour if you feel like you want to do that. That's fairly advanced. Um, certainly you're welcome to do so, but don't feel like you have to start there. Just build up to that. And then when you finish the mantras, then do the silent meditation. And you will find through that relaxation, praying to the Divine Mother, and then pranayama and mantras, you will find that the meditation you will achieve will be deeper than any you've ever had before. And perhaps you will get a visualization from your innermost being, or you'll get some words. Maybe you'll get something to help you explain a, a dream that you had the previous night, or maybe you'll get something that will help you with a problem you're, you're trying to solve. And really, it you, you're not going to get any sort of these responses outside of the meditation in my experience, if you become very, very meditative over several days and you do something like you go on a walk in nature and you're very mindful in that you are self-observing moment to moment, you're not, you know, running, you're not letting thoughts run wild or feelings run wild and, or impulses, you're just fully present, you might get a thought, you might get an idea while out on a walk in nature. That can happen. But that, you know, you can walk in a meditative way. So it's, and that gets into a whole other practice, but um, yeah, that's basically my advice through 
uh, experience with meditation. I know this has been a very long video. I think this is the longest one I've done, but uh, it felt important to go over. And again, do feel free to watch the glory and playlist because it goes more in depth on all of these topics. Um, and experiment with your meditation posture. You know, if you can start with a seated position and no back support, great. If you have some back issues, physical health issues, then you can, you know, use some more back support or you can lay on your back. Um, you can even lay on your back and, and hold out your arms and legs like the Vitruvian man, which is the five pointed star, upright star, right? And um, that's known to help keep away any negative entities from the astral if you're worried about that. Um, because, you know, laying on your back, there's a possibility that you'll fall asleep, a very strong possibility. So laying in the laying with your arms and legs out it can give you a certain level of protection. Uh, and as always, thank you for everyone who's listed all the way through. Uh, I know this was a longer one. Uh, thank you for all of your comments. I'm always happy to answer the questions. And thank you for everyone supporting the channel on uh, Patreon and who, you know, everyone who's joined the Discord. We've been having some really good discussions in there. We are uh, going to be having our first monthly Q&A very soon here on this very topic, which is partly why I wanted to make this video and why it's a little bit longer. Um, and yeah, that's that's it for this one. I will speak with you all in the next video.